Today I got a Lenovo IdeaPad 110. I'm going to do an SSD replacement and a clone. I'll show you how to do it. Hey guys, how's it going? Dale here. Uh, today I got another SSD upgrade and cloning video I want to do for you. Just going to show you how to do this if you're doing it at home. What I have here is an older, it's an older laptop. It's a Lenovo IdeaPad 110. It's the um, IdeaPad 110 15. ACL is the model number. It's got an AMD A6 7310 processor in it. It only has four gigabytes of DDR3 memory. It's got one slot in there, so that's not gonna mess with that. Um, your standard 15 inch display. Nothing too fancy, but it's got the original 500 gig um, SATA hard drive in it. We're gonna replace that. Simply replace that with a Crucial MX500 series. 500 gigabyte SATA SSD. Uh, two and a half inch. Now you could go up to a one terabyte or even a 250. Seems they had a 500, they just wanted to go with a 500 and one of these. So I'm going to clone the hard drive onto this. And I'm do, I, I like to do these videos so if you're doing this at home, I can show you it's not too difficult to do if you got the right, right drives and the right tools basically. Now you will need an adapter like this. This is a USB to SATA adapter for a two and a half inch drive. This is the A type. They also you can get these little adapters for a C-type USB if you got a laptop with a C port, um, USB-C, but this one doesn't, so I'm going to use the standard USB one. Um, the software I'm going to use is simply, again, if you're doing this at home, you can download the free Acronis True Image from Crucial's website. I'll stick a link down below where you can download it for free. Um, it's the Acronis True Image, but it it's only works if you have a Crucial drive. If you had like a Western Digital drive, you can get the Acronis from West Western Digital and some of the other manufacturers use it as well. So I, I hooked up, sorry, I hooked this up to the drive, pretty straightforward, just plug it in. And we're gonna plug this into a USB 3.0 port over on the side here. <clears throat> now I got my mouse hooked up over here so I'm not sticking my hand in the thing there if I can help it. I've already downloaded and installed the Acronis True Image, it's right here. Um, before I do that though, when you're doing a clone like this, it's always a good idea to do a little little prep work basically. First thing you might want to do is just go into your um, C drive, let me open up File Explorer here. Hopefully you can see that okay guys, I know it's kind of hard to see. Zoom this in just a little bit. So if you go to your C drive and you right click on it and you go to Properties, you can click on tools here and hit the check. And then you can click on scan drive right there. It'll check for any errors. It might tell you that you have to reboot. It'll check the drive the next time it reboots. Whatever it tells you to do, basically do it. Just kind of run that, make sure there's no glitches in your, in your OS or your install. That way you, your clone will go good. Also, if you just go into your um, power options, go, you can do this through settings. But we have, you know, make sure your AC adapter is plugged in while you're cloning. You don't want your battery to die. But when it's plugged in, I just turn off sleep and uh, the screen and the sleep. I just, I choose never. You don't want it going to sleep during the middle of the clone. Lastly, go down here in your systems tray in the lower right hand corner. And just anything you can right click on and hit exit or disable during the cloning. That always seems to help a little bit too. Um, make sure you got a fresh reboot and you don't have a bunch of Windows updates downloading in the background and pending as well. So there, those are some simple little steps you can do before you start the clone uh, when you're doing it this way. So I got the drive hooked up. I'm just going to open up the Acronis True Image for Crucial. Just double click the icon. Hit yes on user account control of course. And once I'm done getting it cloned, I'm going to open it up, install it, and boot it up. And it should run quite a bit faster with a SSD drive in there. Now, if you didn't have a crucial drive plugged in like I'm like I do right now, this won't even run. It'll come up and say, eh, sorry, it's only for crucial drives. Same with if it's Western Digital or Kingston. Samsung has their own proprietary cloning software. It works pretty well if you had a Samsung SSD, a two and a half inch. So if it's not already on tools, click on tools over here and then go to clone disk. Just click it once. All right, so we're going to choose the automatic recommended method here. I'm just going to hit next because I'm going 500 to 500, so we don't need to do anything special with the partitions. Uh, our source drive is going to be our 
currently installed Western Digital 500 gig mechanical hard drive. Just choose it and click next. This, these steps here can take a little bit of time. You just got to be patient and don't use your computer doing other stuff while it's cloning, not surfing the internet or whatever. Just kind of start it, walk away, let it finish, and you should get a good clone. Now, if you got a bad hard drive with bad sectors or something like that and the computer still runs but it's really slow, this process probably won't work for you. Um, so we're going to choose our target drive. It sees our CT drive. That's the crucial 500 gig. I'm just going to click choose it and click next. <clears throat> we do a lot of clones here. We typically do them over on our cloning station. But again, I like to do these videos to show you how to do this at home. If you're just doing it once. There's other software. Uh, Macrium Reflex 7 is a is, I believe still a free cloning software you can download and use for free. It's called Macrium Reflex 7. I got videos on how to use that if you don't want to use a Cronus. So here's our basic layout. We're not going to change anything. I'm just going to click on proceed down there and let it start doing its thing here. And once this cloning process starts, I'm just going to um, leave it. And I will speed it up for the video. We'll get to the end, shut it down, and install. Op open up the laptop and install the new drive. Uh-oh. Can I start to get another tool is running? Would I click on something? My bad. Oh, crap. There we go. Sorry. I think I clicked on the... Whatchamacallit over there. There. We're good. <laughs> Freaked me out for a minute. But running that that disk checking or you can even boot into the Windows repair environment and run a check disk uh, slash forward slash F to do a quick check disk on your drive too for any drive errors because if you got errors of any kind the cloning may fail. So I've already done all that on this laptop do, do, again doing it this way. Typically we would just take the hard drive out stick in our cloning machine over there and clone this in about 10 minutes. But again, I'm doing this to show you how you can do it yourself without any fancy dancy anything except this little USB adapter here. Like I said, guys, I got a lot of different videos on different cloning methods and different software that, that, that I've used to show you how to do it. So you might want to go check those out. I do have a play, playlist with SSD upgrades and clones on my channel. All right, guys, I'm going to let this go because this will take a little bit of time for it to actually start cloning. But I'm going to let it go and I'll come back when it's right at the end and we'll wrap it up, install it, and see what happens. All right, guys, I'm back. Just about done here. Copying MBR is the last step, other than the synchronizing. Come on, wait for it. Oh, let's see, it took. 12, 12, taking a little over 10 minutes so far, about 11, 12 minutes. And once you're all done and you get the new SSD in there and boot it up, you can easily just uninstall the Acronis cloning software if you don't want it sitting there on your computer. Just uninstall it like any app. All right, successfully cloned. That's always good to see doing it this way. So I'm going to close out the program. Um, it's going to shut down the laptop so we can install the new SSD. I'm going to unhook it here. Let me go back out a little bit, guys, here. All right, so we're just going to unplug our drive and get rid of Mr. Mouse here for a minute. So basically now we're just going to open it up, swap out the drives, turn it on, and 
Hope for the best. I'm just going to wait for it to shut all the way down here. I think it did. Yep, I always just like to make sure they're out of the way off. All right, so let's go ahead. I'll flip it over here. Now I already took, uh, took I already moved all the screws. I don't usually do that on, cam on camera unless there's something special about them. But all these screws are all the exact same length. There's a bunch of them. Uh, this one here holds in your optical drive over here, which I'm going to pop out. Um, you can use a little paper clip like this and just pop in a little release hole here to open the door. And make sure I took that screw out, which I did. And we'll jiggle this out carefully. Get that out of the way. And then underneath the optical drive here, there's three, three little screws. Boom, boom, boom. They're real tiny, like a number zero Phillips screwdriver with a good tip on it. Should easily remove those. You guys can see here. Just a couple of turns and those typically come right out before we pry it open. All right, and <clears throat> so we got all the screws out. Like I said, they're all the same length. Just remove them all, keep track of them. And now I'm gonna flip it back over this way. Carefully open it. I'm gonna use my little plastic triangle spudger tool here. I'll have a link down below where you can buy these. These open up pretty easy. There's a seam along the top all the way around. So I'm just going to kind of like start maybe about here. Just get it in the seam. And I'm going to kind of separate the palm rest from the bottom and I'll flip it back over. I'm just going to slide along the front here. I like using these because there's a little lip on them. Doesn't let you push it in too far. You don't want to poke the speakers or anything else inside the laptop. Gotta get a little seam there. These come off pretty simple. So I got it, I got it started there. You can see how I open it up. So now I'm just gonna close it without smooshing it back together. And just get this actually came off really easy. Boom, just like that. Once you get them screws out. All right, here's the hard drive in this caddy here. There's going to be there's going to be four screws: one here, 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 and here that we got to remove. And then we're going to unplug it from the SATA connector on the motherboard. So when you're inside, just don't touch anything. You don't have to. And of course, make sure you're always protected protected against static discharge. Um, if you want to disconnect the battery here, all you got to do is unplug it right here from the motherboard. Just pull this little cord out, which I'll I'll do real quick, just for the sake of safety. It just simply unplugs, just like that. Quite easy. You can see that. Um, but again, just don't drop your tools or screws or poking and touching stuff. There's our one stick of 4 gig DDR3 L memory, just the one slot. You could put an 8 in there, but... I'm not going to do that today. Just going to put the new SSD in the caddy. So I'm going to grab. That looks like a number zero. Just use good quality tool, guys. Tools with magnetic tips, so you're not losing your screws. All right, get it in the hole, Dale. Like that. Having that magnetic tip just keeps you from dropping screws places you don't want to drop them. So it just simply comes right out just like that. So now we're going to take out the four mounting screws in the caddy here that hold the drive in. And I'm going to, eh, I think number zero will work for that. Yep. Slide that over so you can see a little better. I'm just taking out the four screws, holding the drive in the caddy. So 
So there's Mr. Hard Drive, bye bye. And we're just going to put the SSD back in the caddy the same way. Make sure the holes line up. Just like that. <clears throat> Don't forget to hit the like button guys and subscribe, that would be great. I like to talk while I work doing these videos for you guys, so bear with me. I know some people leave comments like, you talk too much. Well, just trying to fill the dead air, I guess. <laughs> All right, so we got it mounted. Pretty simple. Got it in the caddy. And we're just going to carefully slide it back into place. Should just slide right in, just like that. Put the four mounting screws back in. And we're done. It's nice and clean in there. Very clean inside this thing. She mainly is online doing YouTube with this and music. That's it. <laughs> she has another computer that she uses for everything else. The customer I'm talking about. All right. Just like that, guys. That's it. Let me hook the battery back up. I just wanted to unplug it to show you how to do that in case you don't have to unhook the battery when you're doing this. But if, you, if you're not sure yourself, just safe and sorry. If that's plugged in and you dropped a screw over there, you could easily break your board. You don't want to do that. Pretty basic in here. Got your Wi-Fi card, your battery, cooling pan, one stick of RAM. Of course, this optical drive goes right over here. So then you got your SD card slot here as well. So anyway, let's button it back up. See if the clone went good. And when you're squeezing this thing back together, don't squeeze on your lid too hard because you could actually damage your screen even from the back side. So be conscious of that. So once I'm all done I, <clears throat> and I know the clone's good, I'm gonna of course put all the screws back in. Do a little tuning up on this thing for. Plug in my power cord. Get that reflection out of there, sorry. Let's hit the power button, see if it blows up. Don't need Mr. Mouse anymore. Going from a hard drive and a lower end computer like this to a solid state drive makes makes a huge difference and it just makes a huge difference in performance. Even for a low end computer. It's already booting eight times faster. All right, boom, came right up. Everything's loaded already. Um, just open this bad boy up. I will uninstall the Acronis True Image. I'm done with it. Um, so there, there's our 500 gig hard drive. I'm gonna slap the optical drive back in the side. It's not showing up in over here, but it's sitting right over here on the side, guys. I just want to make sure the clone went good, which it did. So I'll put the CD drive back in, all the screws, tune it up, and we should be should be good to go. Hope the video was helpful. If you're trying to do this yourself at home, um, you can watch some of my other cloning videos if you like. They may be helpful as well. So hit the subscribe button. Um, thanks for watching. Have a super duper day.